Good morning. Glad you're with us here on this Thursday. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Netta Irampour. And on to our top story here this morning. Asylum seekers at our border, they're having trouble with this app that's supposed to streamline the process. This was put out by the Biden administration recently for those who want to request asylum. Yeah, this is, app is called the CBP-1 app. And CBS 8's Dana Ray McNichol live in San Isidro now with more details on some of the technical issues that migrants are facing with this. Good morning. Good morning. We're learning some of those difficulties that the migrants are facing. This is the only way migrants can request protection at a port of entry. Now, CBP-1 just launched launched last month, so it is very new. Activists we spoke to say it was created to have uh, migrants experience a less stressful experience, but it's doing the complete opposite. On paper, looks good. In practice, it's a, it's a complete failure. And so, what it does is it frustrates migrants who aren't able to use the uh, the app. Now, some of the problems include low internet connectivity, error messages, and issues with facial recognition. Some don't even have a working phone to start their process. Migrants must download the app, then create an account and fill out a series of questions. They're also asked to snap a picture and enter how they're traveling. It will then create a confirmation number. Now, our CBS 8 team was here last night in San Isidro. We met a mother from Honduras who just stepped on U.S. soil for the first time. She tells us that she's encountered countless glitches from the apps for weeks. She was still processed and allowed to cross the border, but still was given no answers for the technical difficulties. Now, the application has slowly processed some migrants, but activists are pushing for the federal government to find an alternative system for processing. Now, maybe it's just because it's a very new system, CBP-1, uh, but of course, this is a huge resource for those migrants, and if it's not working, it leaves them with a lot of questions when they get to a port of entry. So, of course, we'll keep you updated if the federal government updates or changes the system. I'm Dana Marie McNichol, coming to you live from San Ysidro.